Back here on MLB Now, Dana Brown is the new general manager of the Houston Astros. Uh, last four years was the VP of scouting for the Atlanta Braves. Big part of their success before that. A uh, bunch of years with the Blue Jays, special assistant to the general manager before that. The Nationals been in the game a long time. Uh, now the man in charge of the defending World Series champions, Dana Brown, joins us now. Dana, it's Brian Kenny. Congratulations on the job, and thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Brian, and uh, I'm glad to be here with you. Excellent. What, what is it like being in charge? Again, you've been in the game a long time, but now you're the guy making the decisions. What is that like? Well, actually, it's uh, pretty uh, refreshing, uh, you know, just to get the opportunity to run a major league team. Uh, you know, it's exciting, of course. Um, you know, the one thing I've been able to do my entire career is listen to others who have opinions and, and guys like that who can help you uh, make good, good, wise decisions. You obviously join a club with a pretty good roster, defending champs. But what was your first job when you were addressing things? What did you say? All right, I need, I should get on this. Yeah. So the first thing I did when I came over is I told these guys, "Look, you guys are good. Of course, you won the World Series last year. The team's in good, in, in really good shape. The one thing I like to do is see if we can create some, some depth, some starter depth. Uh, I always, I'm always looking for starter depth because I understand." That if you if you have starter depth, it puts your team in a good position, you know, to to win, you know, the division and then go on and to win, go deep into the postseason. You know, I was telling the guys like when I was in Atlanta in uh, 2022, uh, you know, we kind of ran out of gas with our starter depth, and and um, you know, I thought our team was better, uh, but our guys were out of gas, and uh, we we had an earlier exit uh, in the postseason, and uh, whereas. This club, you know, last year they had the six-man rotation. They had a really good bullpen. At the end, they just plowed through everyone because they had that depth and they were very fresh and they had a good bullpen. So are you going to be – are you open to moves or do you have enough within your system? Yeah, I think we have some good guys within the system. I mean, we got uh, uh, Whitley throwing well in AAA. Uh, Dubin throwing well in AAA. Um, France is uh, getting – you know, he's getting it together. So we do have some depth in AAA, and you know we 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 started to stretch out Blanco uh, as a as a guy that may be an option who could jump in there if, if we need him. You know we have Belak also in AAA, so we have some depth, and I always like having depth because you never know what the course of the season what could happen. Right, and I feel like our rota I feel like our rotation is strong. Uh, but there's nothing wrong with having depth. Right. It's already one of the deeper in the, in the major leagues. Speaking of depth, Mauricio Dubon has been excellent for you. He was uh, brought over in the, the previous administration. But was there any thought to making a move or doing something different to fill in while Jose Altuve was hurt? Yeah, I mean, we thought that we had some internal candidates that, would, you know, that could bridge the gap for us. Uh, you know, and at the end of the day, when we start talking to other clubs, it was a little rich for us to, to acquire some of the guys that we thought that were going to be, uh, you know, some temporary help. And so, you know, we felt good about our internal options. And, you know, at the end of the day, the bond's been playing well. And it's exciting to see he's good defensively and he's swinging the bat right now. You know, I, I, we were looking at payroll here in, in the first two weeks we've been doing the show because it, it does matter. Look, the Braves are with the Braves. They made a big surge, you know, in their in their payroll in recent years. They're up, at, you know, moving up to seventh now. They're in the top ten. The Astros are tenth in payroll. So you spend 192 million, I think, was the, the uh, 216. That's the the, the the tax payroll. You know, the Mets spend about 160 million more. Padres, Phillies are surging. What effect does that have on your ball club, given that you're in the top 10, but you're right there at 10? Yeah, so this is one of the things that in my vision, and I talked to uh, Jim Crane about, and I think, you know, uh, I think it's very important, you know, um, as you go forward and you draft major league players and these guys make an impact down the road, it'd be nice to get these uh, contracts secured, uh, you know, as you're drafting these players and you're thinking they're going to make an impact at a major league level. Because uh, sometimes when you have to go out into free agency, it gets very expensive. And, you know, before you know it, your payroll could be very high. And so, uh, you know, when I came over, one of my things, and we were kind of kind of doing it in Atlanta where we were trying to secure some of the contracts while guys were still in their arbitration years, um, you know, so that you don't have to worry about free agency, long-term, big contracts. And with that said, you know, if you can get some of that done, it will help you to keep your payroll down and uh, gives you 
great opportunity to win and go get some players at the deadline or later in the year if you need them. Interesting. No, because you got Christian, Christian Javier on, on an extension when you got there, right? So, that, and the Braves were very aggressive. We, we've seen that with Mariners, Padres with Tatis, Wander Franco with the Rays. Is that the new wave? Get guys very early, get them real money. Yeah, of course, but, you know, it's, it, there is some risk tied to it. You have to be, uh, you know, willing to re really evaluate it. You have to make sure that you get the makeup right of the player. Uh, you have to really feel like this guy is going to be a good chip for you long term. Uh, while there is risk, I think if you, you know, make all the evaluations, get the makeup right, get the evaluation right, I think you got a chance of getting the player right and, um, you know, and, and building that long term success. You know, just on a side note, I know it's come up a bunch of times in your bio, but you played at Seton Hall in the golden era. I mean, that was a crazy, like, grouping of talent. Craig Biggio, Mo Vaughn, John Valentin. What was it like? How did that much talent end up at Seton Hall in the 80s? Yeah, and Blake Meyer was our recruiter. I think he recruited almost all of us. Uh, you know, and Blake, he went on to take over uh, St. John's later on after we left, but... Um, it was a good group. I mean, we we kid we we we, we joke with Valentin all the time. We go, man, you hit ninth on that team, <laughs> and you played thirteen, <laughs> and you played 13, 13 years or twelve years in the big leagues, whatever it was. But he had a great major league career, and he hit ninth on that team. It was a really good team. We we didn't have much pitching. Um, I think we had one or two guys in the rotation. Morton was a freshman at that time. But if we would have one one or two more guys in the in, in the rotation, we might have gone to Omaha and won it all. Well, again, that's a big part of your background. Look, I, I wish you success. I know it, it, that, that, that's a job that has changed. You know, we have Dan O'Dowd on the show today. It's a job that's changed in there. Are you ready for, for the pressure, uh, for the 24-7 nature of it? What, what, what do you think you will do to have longevity in that spot? I think the most important thing you could do in leadership position is to delegate. I think, um, you know, you have to know and understand what you don't know. And then when you know you don't know something, you get help from other people and you stick to what you're good at and you delegate and you get everyone involved. And I think you have a chance of, you know, having long term success. Um, if you try to do it all yourself and you try to make all the decisions yourself, I think you got a chance of crashing and burning. So uh, my thought process is to be clear uh, to these guys around me at what I don't know and to be clear what I do know and to delegate some of the work. And together, collectively, we can uh, make a big impact for this organization. Oh, well, Dana, well deserved again with, with your success. And congratulations on the job. Best of luck. Thanks for coming on today. Thanks, Brian, for having me on. Really appreciate it. All right. Thank you.